Second reading debate, National Health Insurance Bill. I now recognize the Honorable Minister of Health, who will introduce the debate, the Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, let me greet my colleagues from the cabinet and the deputy ministers, and specifically uh, my colleague, uh, Deputy Minister Jomo, Deputy Minister of Health, the chairperson, the chairperson of the portfolio committee, Dr. Jacobs, and all other members of the committee. And good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to all South Africans. Today is indeed a very historic day in this house uh, for the people of South Africa, for our long walk for freedom and for the democracy we started building in 1994. The National Health Insurance Policy, whose bill we are debating today has been in construction since the gazetting of the Green Paper just over 12 years ago. And it feels good today that we have reached this historic milestone. The aspiration to create an equitable and just health system has been part and parcel of our struggle for freedom and democracy. Our forebears who led the struggle for freedom in the 40s and 50s, 1940s and 50s, laid the path in declaring both in the African claims and in the Freedom Charter, that there can be no real freedom without access to good quality and equitable health services. It is perhaps appropriate that we are holding this debate just 12 days before the anniversary of the first day of the sitting of the Congress of the People and 13 days before the adoption of the Freedom Charter itself. The Freedom Charter declared in a very unambiguous terms that I quote, a preventative health system, health scheme shall be run by the state. Free medical care and hospitalization shall be provided for all with special care for mothers and young children. In pursuance of the goal set in the Freedom Charter, when we adopted our constitution in 1996 in this very house, we included in section 27 of the Bill of Rights a clause which directed, I quote, everyone has the right to have access to health services, including reproductive health care. The state must take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources to achieve the progressive realization of each of these rights. No one may be refused emergency medical treatment, uh, a close quote. Honorable members, the bill we are called to pass today is meant to create the legal framework and foundation for the noble aims embodied in the Freedom Charter and our constitution. This is one of the most revolutionary pieces of legislation presented to this house since the dawn of our democracy in 1994. A lot has been done and achieved by the democratic government since 1994. We inherited a fragmented race determined health system out of which we had to build a national democratic and equitable access to health systems. A number of progressive policies have been passed, such as free health services for pregnant women and children under the age of six, as early as 1995 by the founding father of our democracy, President Mandela. After that, we, we proceeded to declare fee free services at primary health care facilities and also access to reproductive health services, including the choice on termination of, Prognan of pregnancy act. What we have not been successful so far over this period is to avoid a replacement of race-based differentiation of access and quality by a class differentiation. As inequality has been growing in our country, even cutting across race, access to quality health services has been a casualty with those who have private medical insurance consuming 51% of the national spending of the GDP on health while constituting only 16% of the population while 84% of the population depends on 49% of resources purely from the fiscal service by the public health system only. This has led to a situation where the public health system is under tremendous pressure, while the private healthcare is over servicing its clients, lead, leading to ever rising costs to the members of medical schemes, while the investors are enjoying huge dividends, including dividends from the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. The reality, honorable members, is that this situation is not sustainable. As the number of people in formal jobs is not rising in line with the investments in private health care and the cost of administering medical schemes, the cost of subscription to medical schemes is rising above inflation every year, 
while benefits are reducing and getting exhausted before the end of the calendar year. Another major injustice is that almost all healthcare professionals are trained at the expense of taxpayers, uh, including ordinary people who spend their money buying goods and paying uh, VAT. Uh, but, all, but once the, the, uh, the, uh, the medical professionals have, have qualified and become specialists, especially and specialists, only those with the, uh, we can afford are able to access their services. Whereas also in the training, uh, all professional health professionals are trained also for their clinical skills on ordinary South Africans in public health facilities. But once they are, they are qualified, they are only accessible to those with money. The availability of top health professionals to only those with medical aids, but even migration to other countries is totally unjust. Members of medical schemes, even in this very house, are under tremendous financial pressure and employers are also under pressure to increase their share of the contribution, which is also not sustainable. Honorable members, in simple terms, what the NHI seeks to do is to stop the two trains, that is the private health and the public health traveling on parallel tracks, surely going to crash both of them. But if they could work together and be pulled together and complement each other, we can get a better service. The NHI seeks to pull resources of those who can only contribute to the fiscals through uh, uh, contributions such as VAT and other collections, and those of us who are able already making contributions to the fragmented 81 medical schemes uh, to, to who, who are purchasing services on our behalf. And, 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 and as I've said already, this is not sustainable. In doing so, we can achieve access, equity and quality, but also drive down costs. I know that there are those of you in this house and outside who say that the NHI is unaffordable, but you're basing this on highly inflated costs among some of the private uh, providers who are under pressure to keep delivering super profits, even higher than gold mines and platinum mines. Even in major developed countries such as the, uh, the UK, where universal health coverage is applicable, it is the insurer who determines the price, not the, the provider of service. And that's why they are able to sustain it. The NHS in the UK, as an example, which was established on the 5th of July, 1948, just three years after the end of the Second World War. At that time, parts of the country were still in ruins. There was not much of the economy to speak of in terms of saying we can't afford it now. Many of the doctors there actually op opposed the NHS and it's not surprising, therefore, it's not new in our country that we have some of the organizations of medical practitioners opposing. But today, it doesn't matter which government is in power in the UK, whether it's the Conservative Party or the Labour Party, all of them understand one thing, that the NHS is the jewel of the country and must be protected. So we are saying, uh, honorable members, that uh, we do understand some of the concerns about uh, poor management, but we want to say to you that even in the, in the uh, overburdened public service, there are a lot of jewels, there are a lot of good performances across. You can look at, uh, I can give you examples of uh, Steve Bigo in, in Twani, Charlotte McClake, Kroteskir here, Mamelodi Hospital, which was very much down at some stage, but within two months, I mean, two years, Mamelodi is now one of the best uh, 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 district hospitals, just in terms of turning around management. So I want to urge all of you honorable members today, Please stand to uh, and, and be honorable Minister, your in time is this bill, which will really make a historic change in the lives of ordinary South Africans. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, honorable member. The next speaker is the honorable clerk. Thank you, House Chairperson. The ANC keeps touting the NHI as being the best interest of South African citizens, that it is a bill born out of care that will save the public health system. So let us take an honest look at what the implementation of NHI bill will mean for the ordinary South African. Now about 9 million people have medical aids. Once the NHI is implemented, the 9 million people who have to be accommodated on an already overburdened public health system. Instead of going directly to the privately paid doctors and hospitals, they will now be competing for treatment in the public health system with its severe staff and resource constraints. 
The last indicators of the national surgery backlog was more than 168,000 cases. The ANC might argue that through the NHI fund, private health facilities will be servicing a larger portion of the public previously unable to access their services. However, this is based on the ludicrous assumption that those 9 million South Africans would continue to pay their medical aids when it ha will have no longer benefit for any of them. Without private patient funding, private health facilities would be dependent on government funds, effectively making them public health facilities without the benefit of a dedicated budget. As governments has done no feasible feasibility studies, we do not know how many facilities would survive government's imposed fee structures. These potential closures would further decimate the health sector. In addition, talking of a decimated sector, staff shortages are a massive problem and have been for years. Not only are public health personnel expected to work in horrendous and unsafe conditions and facilities where the provisions of quality health care is nearly impossible. They are victimized when they speak out in an effort to address their concerns. There will surely be a mass exodus of medical professionals if the NHI is enforced. How has government addressed these shortages? not by accrediting private health sector to train their full capacity of nurses. Has government upgraded their health facilities and ensured that hospitals and clinics are safe? Have working equipment, enough beds, medicine and food, the DA and committee's oversights, AG reports, patient feedbacks, or whistleblowers attest that many of the country's hospitals and clinics border on inhumane conditions. To this day, we do not know which services the NHI will cover. Will the department pay for hip replacements, dental care, appendix removals, dialysis, chemotherapy, TB, and HIV treatment or mental health care? We do not know because you have refused to inform us, possibly because you don't know, but possibly the biggest reason why the NHI will inevitably destroy all healthcare in South Africa, the ANC cannot be trusted. Corruption has become more natural than breathing to you. During a worldwide pandemic that saw more than 102,000 South Africans die and had millions confined to their houses in fear, the ANC government facilitated the looting of 2.1 billion rand that was meant to treat coronavirus and intervene in a variety of ways. Not something a government that cares for the poor and the vulnerable would have done. The DA has always believed in collaborating with the private sector for the whole of society approach in addressing the issues plaguing society, instead of scapegoating them for governance failures. Despite the ANC's best attempts to create the impression that the private health sector is to blame for the public sector's deficiencies, it is government's mismanagement, cadre deployment, and corruption that has caused and now immortalized and immortalize the destruction. The key is to ensure that patrons of the public and the private health sector both receive quality health. After all, the expansion of private health care sector is a consequence of the failing public health sector, not the cause. As such, conditions must be created that will encourage private investment in the public health sector. Your determination to alienate or absorb the private health system will end in tears. Corruption must be rooted out and provinces need to have greater accountability where health outcomes are poor. Do not sell a dream to people. When you, mis dis when you misdiagnose the problem, you will not find the correct cure. The cure is proper financial management and zero tolerance to corruption. 
However, that cannot be done until people like the former health minister is held accountable. The NHI is not the miracle the ANC purports it to be. It is smoke and mirrors meant to make voters believe that the grotesque looters standing in front of them have been. Honorable member, your time has now expired. Thank you. That once liberated a nation. They have not, and they never will. We will not support this bill. The next speaker is the Honorable Chirwa. Greetings to the Commander-in-Chief of the EFF, Julia Sello Malema, the Deputy President, Nyoko Shivambu, all the officials, commissars, fighters, and ground forces of the only economic emancipation movement in South Africa. Ten years of the existence of the EFF has seen the lives of many of our people being made better without the dependence on taxpayers' money. Thousands of young girls across the country have missed less and less days of school due to period poverty because of the EFF Center Tower programs. So you know about daycare for children with disabilities, Mohala Kwena Hospice and Rehabilitation Center, and Zanelem Child Disabilities Home are some of the facilities for vulnerable people that can attest to the care and the love of the EFF for the abandoned and neglected in our communities. Donating 30 rand to the EFF by SMSing EFF donation to 42191 is truly a noble and charitable cause. A happy and a revolutionary 10th birthday year to the mighty economic freedom fighters. Chairperson, the National Health Insurance will be counted as one of the biggest scams of the African National Congress of our time. The ANC, through a Bill Gates mandate given in 2009, agreed to manipulate our people and convince them that equal health care for all would suffice through the NHI. We reiterate the long health sentiments that the NHI contrary to popular belief, is far from what it is said to be. The NHI is not the eradication of a two-tire system. No, the NHI is true evidence. And the fact that the only way to eradicate a two-tire system is through nationalization, not tenderizing healthcare. The NHI is the outsourcing of healthcare to the private sector through the pooling of funds of, of the hardworking South Africans and state coffers to find the insatiable appetite for profit of institutions like Netcare and Life. Minister Joe Pata, who date has failed to appraise Parliament of the true cost of the NHI, and the Minister of Finance has also failed to present to Parliament precisely how it will be funded. The NHI is not the Honorable, honorable Member, there's a point of order. What is your point of order, Honorable Member? Sir. Sure. Is it parliamentary for the honourable member to shout at us? No, honourable member, that's not a point of order. Don't rise on frivolous points of order, please. Please continue. Start me, start me. Order. The NHI is not the easing of access to health care for the poor, as there is a, in, a referral system that is encapsulated in the NHI that states that we should all access health care at our nearest health facility. This means that. Those living in townships, in rural areas, in former settlements, will still be subjected to the public health facilities. There's no developers emceeing on a Togoza. In fact, public hospitals will be more debilitated as the money meant to better the infrastructure, increase the workforce, and provision of quality of health care will end up in the hands of private sector who will claim and claim from the state the same way they claim for medical aid and they have their customers leave their premises in utter humiliation, taken into public hospitals because they no longer have money. The NHI is a direct manifestation of what the Ramaphosa administration truly represents. The fully fledged program to privatize everything and leave the state useless. All socialists should, in fact, with ease reject the NHI. The ANC government has privatized dams, national parks, state-owned entities, SAA, and a sold of assets of Transnet. 
is instituting the privatization of ESCOM and is in a constant motion of stripping the state of power so it is unable to provide for the needs of our people and we are at the mercy of the private sector for all aspects of our lives. The goal is to ensure that nothing in the public sector works. The goal is to destabilize everything in the public sector and empower the private sector. The state of our public schools, public policing and security, public institutions and now public health care is evidence of the program of the ANC is when the EFL provide a solution of increasing access to quality health care for the most destitute through the private member bill, the National Health Act, Amendment Act, that was to see at least one health facility in every ward and that all the clinics open for 24 seven and seven days a week. The ANC and the DA alike rejected this noble bill. This is because the mandate is not universal health care. The mandate is to loot the, st the, the state of its money and put it into the coffers of the private sector. Prioritize primary health care prevention and education by employing all community health care workers permanently and bring health care into the houses of our people. Invest in stem cell therapy and numerous in, in medical interventions. Build clinics in all wards in South Africa and have them open for 24 seven and seven days a week. Absorb all nurses that are sitting at home with qualifications. Insource all cleaners and security guards in all healthcare facilities. Build state capacity and stop depending on the private sector to solve your problems as a failing government. We reject this bill as we will not be part of the collective that sees the daylight robbery of the state by ANC Gorgons who owe their allegiance to fellows like Bill and Melinda Gates at the cost of our people's lives. We reject the NHI. <laughs> The, uh, the Honorable Schlengwa, order, Honorable Members, order, order, Honorable Members. The Honorable Schlengwa, please continue. Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson, the IFP remains in full support of universal access to health care service in South Africa for all people in accordance in the right to health care as contained in section 27 of the constitution. We are of the considered opinion that the current form of the bill before the house today is not achievable. We state this for the following reason, affordability. All we recognize that fact that universal access to healthcare is the right which is the progressively realizable and the state, we must also take note that the state has a duty not to act in a manner that negatively impact the current provision of public health care services. In our opinion, the bill before us will do exactly that. We believe it will deny access to existing health care rather than promote same because of the enormous amount of the funding it will require and because of the 9 million people currently on the private medical aid, which the state will seek to cover now as a part of the NHI. This is not affordable and on its own will cause the bill to fail to made in law access to health care. The IFP remains extremely concerned about not only the current poor state of the access to medical health care service in rural area, Lego Mashabatinj and community, but the fact the NHI could further limit access to such healthcare service through its proposed implementation of the refer referral and accreditation network, which could 
exclude speci specific clinics, ministerial overreach. The current form of the bill provides the Minister of Health with power beyond the political office to which he has been appointed. This will open the doorway to undo influence, cater deployment, and negatively impact oversight and without casting any aspirations upon the minister, good name, quite positive, quite possible lead to fraud and corruption in due course. Shortage of medical professional. Abe konjoto gotel. Snespe de langetina. Kwat eze singe na aboto gotel. Sino HIV. Sina bantwe tipi. Sang vele basangan fanda wonye. Ngoba abe koto gotel. Abe konis. Remember your time is now expired. Thank you. The I. Honourable Member, your time has expired. Do not and do not support the current form NHIV bill. Thank you. Bill. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honourable Sheikh Imam. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Allow me to advise this House that the National Freedom Party will support the NHIV bill tabled here today. Allow me at the same time to reiterate the point that we've made before that South Africa needs to move to a preventative healthcare system in order to save lives. Latest statistics is people are dying at a very young age. Very little or no budget is appropriated towards ensuring that we communicate to the masses on the ground on living healthier lives and prevent uh, untimely deaths. Now, having said that, a latest survey or report has found five out of 696 health facilities had only passed the inspection. That is how poor the state of healthcare is on the ground. Primary healthcare has a lot of work to be. That's the first problem that we have. The second problem we have is the limited budget that is made available to this particular department. The other problem that we have, of course, and a very important problem, and that is the issue of the lack of availability of medical practitioners and nurses. Not that they are not available, but more importantly, because the inadequate resources to accommodate them, giving rise to the fact that a large percentage of them remain unemployed. Now, I think when I, my question to some of those that are opposing this, do you know what it is to be 60 years old and standing in a queue waiting for medical facilities and you are told you are too old, that we cannot accommodate you, we will spend, spend money on the younger? No, you don't understand. Do you understand what it is when you go to a hospital and they say, we do not have the necessary facilities available right now, wait for six months or two years on the waiting list and people die before that? No, you don't understand that. So the NFP, NFP is of the view that together we should find solutions. Yes, indeed, there are lots and lots of challenges that we're going to face. However, the department needs to do a lot more to ensure they improve on the quality of the infrastructure, the availability of, of, of healthcare workers in order to be able to get them, particularly to the rural areas. These are the communities that are most affected. The other problem that we have is there is no coordination between the Department of Health and other relevant stakeholders. As a result, we have a high levels of alcohol abuse in, and drug substance abuse in this country. And that is giving right even the younger generation today in South Africa. You know, the challenges that we face, particularly at the youth of today, with alcohol and the impact that it is having, in, in the healthcare in the country needs to be addressed. And more importantly, immigration and the impact it's having on our healthcare services. Clearly, I think a lot of work needs to be done, honorable chairperson. However, it's not something that we cannot address, but we need to collect. Remember, your time is now expired. Thank you. Thank you very much.